Hello, everybody. It's Jeb Hamwerner from GoldStockTrades.com. It's February 27th, 2020, coming to you at 9 a.m. in the morning on one of the most uh, volatile weeks in the market in many, many years. We've seen multiple thousand-point declines due to this, what the media is saying is coronavirus. But if you look through my blogs and Twitter, we know that the slowdown in China has been going on for a while. The recession in Germany uh, is is clear. Uh, the Treasury yields are hitting record lows. We saw the repo uh, movement and the expansion of the balance sheet at the end of 2019. China has been dealing with protests in Hong Kong and a slowing economy for a while. And now we have the coronavirus that has really started a cascading domino effect. Uh, and concerns about growth, global growth, and concerns about global manufacturing. And this week, we saw silver, which finally was turning the corner, and the moving averages began pointing higher. The golden crossover in last at the end of two thousand, in the middle of two thousand nineteen, uh, we had a big breakout in gold, uh, and gold has made big moves. But silver was still just beginning to lag and maybe play catch up here. Uh, but we see here a nasty week uh, with silver and out, uh, a bearish outside reversal. But the 50 days are still pointing higher. Uh, one week does not make a new trend. Uh, so you see that it tried to break through on the SLV on the iShare Silver ETF at 17.5, and it's had some nasty reversals at that resistance zone so we got another one this week in silver so uh watching that 50 day or 40 week uh, moving average which is the 200 day uh that's at 16 bucks 1594 around the uh eight uh, the 400 day or 80 week moving average is around 15 bucks so we're beginning to see uh Moving averages are pointing higher, but there is some big selling uh, that has come into silver and uh, into uh, this week. So uh, this may take a couple of weeks uh, to to watch uh, consolidate. Uh, this coronavirus is a black swan, and uh, during black swans and during volatility, money managers, especially the younger money managers, and one of the things that I I realize that a lot of the young man money managers uh, do not have see gold as a safe haven and they run to treasuries and uh, eventually uh, like in 2008 people realized that gold and silver is the ultimate safe haven and uh, but the first few weeks when you have a crash uh, I've seen that most money managers run to treasuries um, right now they're running to the yen and the dollar. Uh, you know, Canada is not getting a safe haven bid, the Canadian dollar. Um, just really U.S. Treasuries, uh, palladium has been holding in, uh, and it was up actually one of the few things that was up yesterday. So, uh, but silver is definitely, we're watching this weekly close. It would be a bearish uh, close if it closes down at this level and doesn't make an attempt to at least get back to that 17 area. Um, so there may be some consolidation here. We're getting into that PDAC period uh, where there is that, that, that slowdown. Um, so... You know, we're closely monitoring the silver market. Technically, it's gone through challenges this week. Uh, but, you know, over the longer term, over the weekly term, um, when you look at weekly charts, you see there is some bright spots here. It's the first time that we've had some bullishness uh, across over 50 of the 40 and 80 day on the weekly. And uh, it came into strong support. Here at at thirteen dollars, but you see here the seventeen fifty has been a, a major line of resistance, and then again has failed there um, to be uh, you know 
I would have liked to seen it break through this with as and seen as a safe haven. Let's see how long this selling will last. Taking a look at the GLD, I think there's nothing really to be concerned about. We've had this breakout. Um, you know, it's overbought. So when there are margin calls and people are going to sell some of their gold to cover their losses in other areas in the Dow and the S&P. So, you know, it was higher this week in gold. Um, you know, it's still, it could uh, close even higher on the week. So there's nothing here bearish on this chart. The only thing that might be bearish is that it's a little overbought and it may come down to its 40-week moving average or 80-week uh, moving average and the bearish volume if it closes um, lower this week, which we st this jury's still not out yet. Uh, we still have it to the end of the day. Um, you never know. There may be some push by central bankers to have a cut, a rate cut. Um, but the only thing that might be that I've heard from the BMO show and from a lot of fund managers, they thought gold might just be a little bit overbought and ahead of itself. Um, it's a little bit extended above its moving averages. Uh, so there, but the chart is still extremely bullish. It's still, I believe, a safe haven, even with this, with this coronavirus. Um, the chart is extremely uh, bullish on gold. Uh, and there's nothing to be worried about with this one um, bearish reversal. And if you take a look at the weekly chart, there's absolutely nothing to be concerned about with the GDXJ. Yes, we have this one week bearish reversal uh, because of this volatility. People are going to sell. Look, the GDXJ hit a high of $45 last week. That's higher than it was at 27 and a half that people were buying it back in 2018. So when people are having declines and they want to be cautious or they may have margin, um, this is will be sold. But I think that it's going to be quickly, uh, the trend is, is moving higher. We've had that golden crossover back in, in this last summer with the breakout in the gold price. Um, you know, we're getting into some resistance zone, zones here at $50. That's going to be new all time, uh, a major breakout from $50. Uh, that's going to probably cause us to go, I, I think we're going to go to, to a multiple. Uh, this is a very bullish chart while you're seeing all the momentum names being broken down. So this is not a time to be selling and, and running, um, this, you, if, if, if we've been positioned, we've been studying the GDXJ, we've been studying gold, what's going on with the stock market, it's not just the coronavirus. Germany was already going into a recession. Treasury yields were already going negative and lower, and, and the world was going negative rates. Uh, manufacturing is continuing to slow. We were been positioned in precious metals, palladium, uh, and those charts still look very bullish. So there's nothing to be downcast about. There's nothing to want to quit and give up. you got to stick to your game plan here. Be long juniors. Have precious metals, gold and silver, physical. But also speculate um, with the, the miners, the GDXJ and the SILJ. And... Look at the highest quality explorers that are beginning to break out. One that had great news this week was Roscan Gold uh, in Mali near Ficola, which is just better than anyone expected for B2 Gold, which announced earnings this week. Uh, and they're expanding Ficola, and now there's this new discovery, Roscan Gold. They had some great results, uh, I think 80 meters over 3 grams. Uh, there's a lot of gold there, and... Uh, they're drilling, they're adding a rig. So there's some good news. Um, there's some really great companies that are coming up with ways to save gold miners money, especially with mineral extraction, uh, placing activated carbon, six wave, X, SIXW. Uh, that's holding up there. I think that's going to be, uh, you know, especially with their agreement, agreement with uh, Sumitomo, the Japanese mining giant. 
you know, having that technology in gold, that, that area is going to be big uh, in this next bull market in precious metals and this rotation from stocks to precious metals like we saw in 1999 when the dot-com bubble burst. We saw in 2008 when the housing bubble burst. And now we're going to see again in 2020 when this everything bubble sort of bursts. And what we're seeing now is the beginning, could be just the beginning of that. And uh, the gold juniors have not broken out yet, but they could be. And they're setting up for that, and they're basing for that. Um, and uh, so stay tuned. There's uh, to goldstocktrades.com. We'll see how the weekly close is. Uh, but nothing to be concerned about. The gold chart's still bullish. The silver chart's still bullish. Uh, had, had a bit rough week. We'll see how it closes. But the moving averages are pointing higher. The bases are still apparent. It still looks like the place to be over the next few years. And uh, that's all for today. Uh, we'll be in touch if anything develops. Make sure you stay tuned to goldstocktrades.com. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to my Twitter feed at Gold Stock Trades. Uh, make sure you follow me on LinkedIn, Jeb Handwerker, uh, so that you can make sure that you get up-to-date news, which companies are breaking out, which companies are coming out with really good news, which insiders are buying, which insiders are selling, uh, which companies are getting sponsorship, which companies are hitting, uh, making new development new developments, new catalysts, uh, transactions that can really begin to change the supply demand of an equity or a commodity. Goldstocktrades.com, Jeb Hanwager, Friday, February 27th, 2020. Big week in the markets. Stay tuned.